Hi, I'm Stephanie Matthews, Executive Director of A Tribe for Jazz, a nonprofit whose mission is to preserve the legacy and advance the future of jazz through visual storytelling, live and virtual performances, education, and community engagement. And I'm really honored today to have uh, with me <laughs> uh, my good friend. I'm John Ravagon, composer, band leader, and saxophone player. What's nice up, boss? Good, good. I'm glad you're here too. So, John, um, we just finished the film. Legacy, John Arabagon, a solo tenor odyssey, which is a boss title. <laughs> and it's totally amazing. It's got posters and everything that goes with it. It's, it's a really uh, just an extraordinary film. Um, but, John, I want you to tell everybody what made you want to work with a tribe for jazz? Well, I met Bruce through um, Ralph Alessi and Andy Milne, mm -hmm. who I was touring with at the time. And the possibilities of, of all the different facets that you guys offer, all the different specialists that you guys have as part of the nonprofit, um, it's expansive. It doesn't exist in the current jazz world. And to be part of the, the vanguard, the beginning stages of this kind of synergy between mm -hmm. an artist's creative vision and having a team of specialists be able to help them achieve that was very exciting for me. So I was like, let's go for this. And, and I'm super happy with how the movie turned out and I couldn't be more thankful. Wonderful, wonderful. Because I, you know, I know it was a leap of faith for you and it, and we garnered your trust, you know, we gained your trust, um, but you went into this kind of, you didn't know us. we had only had Zoom calls and, you know, a few phone calls, and I know there were a lot of notes and stuff being passed and forth when I was expressing the vision and introducing you to the different, you know, team members and whatnot, but what was that like for you? Was that a little bit scary to kind of say, okay, I'm gonna go to Columbus, I'm gonna shoot this thing, I'm gonna go for three days, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust this process? Well, what was great is that there's, there, you know, everyone had their own role. And so I could just trust that, I could trust that the stylist was so awesome that I didn't have to worry about the clothes part, you know? Mm -hmm. I could trust that the lighting and the sound and the videography and everything was gonna be top notch. Mm -hmm. So in, in essence, it was a super easy weekend for me um, working with you guys because I was just following the orders. You guys just told me what to do, and I said yes, and let's go do this. So. You were amazing that way, too, because I don't think a lot of people could have gone the three days, because that was a tight schedule. I mean, yeah. we, we, we crushed it, but we packed a lot in. And um, you were amazing for that, by the way. Uh, and you never complained once. <laughs> but we kept you well fed. <laughs> Um, um, but no, it was wonderful. But let's talk about some of the elements of what we did that weekend. Uh, let's start with the styling because, I mean, dude, Sierra, she really, she really went in on your style. I mean, how do you feel about what she did for you? Oh, amazing. I mean, I totally feel like a brand new person. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait for the get, like the music world and traveling and gigs to come back like to full swing again, mm -hmm. like pre-2020 so that I can show off this whole new wardrobe I've got. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, but see, but I love what she did when, um, one of my favorite looks is when we were at Lincoln Social and you had the white, was it white linen suit? Mm -hmm. Was it the white linen suit with the hat? I mean, it's really sharp. And like what you all were doing with the different glasses and just the whole, the vibe, who, the glasses, was that, was that your idea or? No, it was hers. It was, it was her? all hers. Yeah. It's all her idea. I mean, what was great working with Sierra for the weeks leading up to it mm -hmm. was that, she, you know, like I don't, never really cared that much about my look or anything like that. And she, w she went with that, but then like just bumped up my style yeah. to like some new level or something that I never would have thought of myself. <laughs> so. No, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, and so there was the styling and we did the photographs. So you got a new body of photographs. And before that even, oh snap, uh, we got to shout out Sarah, who was yeah. working on the graphic design and the website and logo. Yeah. And everything so yeah it's just it's it's just a as a musician that spends all my time focusing on my music mm -hmm. 
the whole world, the social media world, the website world, the internet thing where everyone's becoming hyper responsible for every aspect of their brand. I'm just not, I wasn't prepared for that. I'm, and I'm probably never gonna be prepared for that just by, by myself. So having a tribe for jazz on my side, in my corner, like showing me these different avenues and having specialists that know that those avenues really well, that's invaluable for me. Mm -hmm. So just uh, these couple logos that Sarah and I were able to mm -hmm. carve out, like I'm excited to put some of those Arab John Ravagon t-shirts together and get some <laughs> logos on there and stuff. Yes, yeah, yes, you know, we gotta get that going. Something, indeed, you know? indeed, indeed. So but let's switch gears for a second and talk about, um, Let's talk about the film specifically. So there were a lot of elements that went into the film and I, you know, not to give away too much, you know, to people, but there was the, the cinematic short that we shot, which is kind of the lead up. Um, let's talk about the title though, Legacy. Legacy, what is legacy for you? Because we, we had all of those conversations, remember the emails and like long emails, <laughs> you know? but you know, what, is, what does legacy mean for you? I mean, it's, it's twofold at this point in my life, mm -hmm. now having a family and everything. Uh, first is that I want to continue this trajectory that I started for myself 20 years ago as being an uncompromising, just tunnel-visioned artist for my own music. Mm -hmm. I don't want to cater it to anything. I want to be true to my own vision, and I want to follow that through throughout my whole life. Yeah. I, you know, like whether that means more or less performances where that means more or less appearances in like polls or whatever that doesn't matter mm -hmm. i think for me that the music journey and being true to it um wholeheartedly is the most important legacy i can leave behind for mm -hmm. for my music mm -hmm. so that's that's part of these emails we were talking about that's where i was coming from yeah. the, the entire time but in in the wake of all this anti-asian hate and, and the difficult year that's been going on for Asian Americans. Um, part of my legacy that I wanna leave is that like, you know, when I was growing up, there was no Filipino saxophone player I could look up to in the jazz world. There was touring the clubs and playing the major festivals in America. Um, and so I've had to, it's been a tough road trying to push forward and, and face, in, face tons of indifference you know, for like, mm -hmm. we don't see anyone that looks like you as a jazz musician. So if I'm a booking agent and I don't really care about the music, but I, my job is to just book a festival, I'm not going to really give John a second chance because like he doesn't look like anyone that would be playing jazz. And that's, you know, th these are things that I've faced my whole life and there's no woe is me story about it. It's, it's, it, you know, like do the work and try to try to get as far as I can. But hopefully part of my legacy, if I can continue to do this and be uncompromising with my own music, through the course of years and decades, is that some Asian or some Filipino saxophonist who's not even born yet, if they get a saxophone in their hand or a trumpet or some kind of mu instrument and they want to play creative, improvisational music or jazz, and they show a passion for it and they put in the work and the effort, hopefully there's one less roadblock that they have to face in order to get to actually to their dreams and wherever they want to go. Absolutely. And if that's my legacy, then that's that's totally worth it for me too. So yeah. the title legacy comes from these two different angles that just happen to be converging right now when mm -hmm. we started talking. Very nice, very nice. You premiered the film with your family. We sent you the yeah. early version. Yeah. <laughs> what did they say when they saw you? Man, they just couldn't believe it. They couldn't yeah. believe it was me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They couldn't believe the the lighting and the cinematography. And uh, I just got a text from my, my sister-in-law. She's just like, John, you're big time now. <laughs> how, did, how did they pull that off? How did they totally. make you big time? So <laughs> I think they're just, they're just impressed with the professionalism, the, art, the, artis, the artistic angles that were taken. And uh, they just couldn't be happier with it. And yeah. same with me. Yeah, the lighting was... Um that was really something when that inspiration came. And, and then when I started working with Steve Musa, uh, who was our lighting designer, and then we were having the back and forth with Julian and all the notes and the sessions and whatnot. We knew after, because you remember you had, uh, how did it work? You went, you decided what your set was going to be. 
you shared your set list. We talked about the different emotional components of the songs and the different transitions. And I was like, you know, it'd be great to have the light to kind of, you know, accompany that, you know what I mean? Uh, to tell like this even fuller story. And it really just came together beautifully. Man, I just... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just thinking yeah. back to our day on, you know, on set, and that was like a really magical day with yeah. like everybody yeah, there. Yeah, it was great to have some people brought in for some of the, the mm -hmm. pieces to have, feel that energy. Yeah, and and even just perform my own pieces that I've played hundreds of times, mm -hmm. but with this aura of different mm -hmm. mood lighting, it was mm -hmm. it made me play things that I've never played before too. So. Yeah, yeah, and I think what people are going to find is when they see the film, there was um. And we were really intentional about it. it. The cinematographers wanted to have like a, a, a choreography around you as they were filming. And so they were kind of moving in tandem and, you know, and I think the film feels very intimate. And I think viewers are gonna see it not having real, I mean, being really drawn into the music. Because I mean, who gets to get that close to someone's hands playing, you know, get to see into the horn, you know, right. hands on the keys. It, it's, just, it's a different vibe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for me, it's been really interesting because we happened to start working just a few months after I got back from South Dakota. Mm -hmm. I spent nine months of 2020 in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. And while I was out there, I found this canyon mm -hmm. that I practiced at for about five hours a day for six or seven days a week for seven months. Mm -hmm. So I spent hundreds of hours out of this yeah. canyon. And the whole time I was out there, it was about expanding my sound and pushing it out there through the canyon, through the different reverberations that were out there, through the, the stream that's at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting because I was playing a lot of solo tenor saxophone out mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and pushing it out and trying to grow it as far as possible. But the great thing about this movie is that, like we were talking about with the cin cin cinematography, I'm still playing solo tenor saxophone, but it's kind of like Close. It's close. It's, it's close. intimate. It's, yeah. it's really yeah. close. So for me, the new solo tenor record that I put out, Bird with, Bird with Streams, mm -hmm. is a perfect complement to Legacy mm -hmm. because they're both solo tenor saxophone things, but they're, they're two sides of the coin. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the, the directing. So Julian came in from, from L.A. He's my guy. Um, trust him completely. And I knew he was going to be perfect for this. Uh, and perfect for you uh, to tell this story. So what was it like working with Julian? I mean, I mean, like I said, I trusted that everyone had their lane and that they were pros in, in wherever, their specialty. And Julian is no exception. Like yeah. I just had complete faith in him and right, his vision for what he saw. Mm -hmm. He draws from so many hours and so many different films that he's already done. Mm -hmm. It was it was easy. It, it was easy because I knew that he was going to deliver an amazing product, and it was also fascinating because of all his expertise from LA. He was able to give it to me, and I don't know anything about the movie world. I don't know anything about acting. I don't know anything about voiceovers or anything like that. So he was able to really draw a lot out of me, where I wouldn't have been able to do it by myself. I think. A good point. So, that, so um, it, it was very organic the way it all happened because it was scripted in terms of we knew that there were going to be two cinematographers and that they were going to move around you in tandem and we knew kind of what the lighting was going to be. But remember, we constructed everything as we went. We yeah. had like the guides, yeah. but we constructed it. And we were just, remember, we were tweaking and kind of, yeah. But what was it like having to, you only, we only did it in one, we did each song one take. Yeah. Which is not like, <laughs> but I mean, you crushed it, so. I mean, it was, it was super easy and everything was super comfortable, so it worked out. What I, what I appreciated about that process and Julian's directorial mm -hmm. thing was that it was kind of improvised too, like yeah. what I was trying to do. And you mm -hmm. could feel that, that synergy because he wasn't, stuck and had some kind of preconceived notion for this piece and mm -hmm, that piece. Mm -hmm. It was it was flowing and that made doing everything in one take that much easier, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And you're right, it was it was very fluid from, you know, Steve setting lights and us tweaking and then kind of like stepping back to say, okay, is this really working? 
and then making whatever adjustments we needed to and then it was like go time yeah and then yeah that was it was really unique not the norm yeah <laughs> you know? not the norm. definitely not the norm but um it totally worked were you were you happy with the sound because we had joey there yeah as the audio engineer yeah. joey from uh, orange judio killer dude he's amazing yeah i, uh, I spent a lot of time with him that, that weekend i was here yeah so. yeah <laughs> He's a good guy. He took me some good record stores. <laughs> I, I went home with about 50 LPs from my trip. Dude, so, incredible. So thank you, Joe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would just say that, um, I mean, it was really an honor to put this story together for you. Um, when the vision started to come together in my mind, um, your inputs, sharing about your family, your life, uh, your daughter and the new baby that's you know on the way and just getting to know you and that process really fueled my ability to be able to to envision what it was going to look like uh and you were very candid which i really appreciated but you were also extremely open in that you were like okay yeah i'm i'm down for this this is <laughs> this looks really good <laughs> and um so that that made the process of being the creative producer on this one uh, so much easier, and uh, it was just really magnificent working with you. So, is there any, yeah, is there anything else you wanted to like say to anybody, or just you know? I mean, it was it was a magical experience. I'm super pumped for everyone to get to see the movie when it Me comes too. out, and uh, it's a singular thing. I don't know of anything else like it, and uh, hopefully. You guys are able to do mo many, many more of these things. That's our prayer. Yeah. You were amazing, John. So I guess we should cheers. I'll do that. We have this here. That so. I can do. <laughs> cheers. Cheers, brother. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye.